No further business, Mr. President. Any further announcements? If not, Senator Kahili. I move that the Senate stand in recess, leaving the journal open until 6 o'clock p.m. to receive messages from the governor. And I further move that pursuant to Senate concurrent resolution number 242 relating to the recess of the 30th legislature regular session of 2020 and the Senate reconvene at a date and time jointly declared by the Speaker of the House of Representatives and the President of the Senate. Senator Favela. I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. If there are no objections from the members, the Senate will stand in recess, leaving the journal open until 6 p.m. and will reconvene at a later date pursuant to SCR number 242. Uh, yesterday, when the CDC issued an advisory uh, requesting that there be a prohibition on groups of 50 or more people meeting, uh, we took that advisory very seriously. And so the Senate President and I worked to um, propose that the legislature uh, suspended our session. Uh, as you know, a few minutes ago, we voted on Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 242, which suspends our session beginning tomorrow. The resolution does not specify the date that we will be returning. Uh, but what it does state is that the Senate President I, and I will issue a declaration uh, to reconvene the session when the circumstances are appropriate. What we'll be doing over the next uh, time period is to monitor the situation uh, to see how um, circumstances unfold. And when the time is appropriate, uh, we would like to reconvene the session. As of this point, all of the bills and all of the resolutions that are pending before the legislature are have been suspended. We will be canceling all public hearings and large group meetings uh, effective immediately. The legislature will remain open during the time that we are in recess. Some members of the legislature uh, will be here for the most part. Uh, staff will also be here, although we will be working on protocols to ensure safety of four members and staff. I think I would add it certainly creates greater challenge for the neighbor island legislators who need to go through Daniel K. Inouye Airport to get to and from home and work. Uh, and so we'll be mindful of that. Uh, the second thing, as the speaker said, we will be open for business, uh, but in the suspension of the regular session and the hearings, the nature of our business invites the public in to participate. If we continue to go forward, the safest way that the public could participate is by sending written testimony and not coming here and interacting. And that just is not an appropriate solution for how the legislature should work and uh, led us to this decision. Uh, most people who have tested positive in Hawaii were exposed outside of the state. However, we are starting to see the edge of community spread of the COVID-19 virus here in the islands. Uh, we are taking unprecedented, unprecedented actions uh, to protect the vulnerable in our community and ensure that medical resources are available to those who most need them. Today, I signed a supplemental emergency proclamation to promote the health, safety, and welfare of the people of Hawaii. As of today, I also today, I appointed the director of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, Ken Hara, to be incident commander along the lines of the presidential proclamation. He will be working with Dr. Bruce Anderson, director of health, to really keep our community safe and move us forward. Um, the first provision of the Supplemental Emergency Proclamation directs all residents to heed public health guidelines related to stopping the spread of COVID-19, including social distancing measures. Um, as you are aware, the department um, did issue guidance on Friday that um, meetings and activities exceeding uh, 100 uh, individuals uh, should be canceled or rescheduled or suspended. 
This has an impact on how government conducts business. Um, the emergency proclamation uh, also addresses government business operations, uh, including the state's sunshine law and administrative rules that are meant to ensure government transparency and allow the public full access to public decision making. However, during this health emergency, as we are recommending actions to uh, initiate social distancing, uh, some of these provisions are just not workable. We want government to work as, to continue to work as much as possible during this time, but the Sunshine Law provision uh, makes it impossible. The pro proclamation allows administrative hearings uh, and public meetings to be conducted through remote technology um, and, and telecommunication tools. All reasonable measures will be taken to ensure public participation that is consistent with the recommendations of social distancing uh, practice as um, advised by the CDC. Uh, the emergency proclamation also waives the one-week waiting period for unemployment insurance. We do know that COVID-19 epidemic uh, impacts our workers all across the state. We will be uh, eliminating the one-week waiting period because we know that many in our community uh, will be not working during much of this uh, slowdown. The Supplemental Emergency Proclamation uh, waives the one-week waiting period for applicants who are unemployed as a result of uh, COVID-19. Um, just want to remind the community that doing our parts also recognizes that if we go out and um, hoard uh, toilet paper and other uh, necessities, it really makes it difficult for others in our community um, to uh, continue to uh, be uh, able to participate. Uh, we are suggesting that people should use restraint. Um, not, there has been no interruption of supply lines. Uh, Matson and all shippers to the islands continue to operate under normal conditions. Uh, this Supplemental proclamation um, specifically addresses hoarding, and we do know that we can take action uh, if we do believe that it is getting out of hand. Um, also want to note that under um, my first emergency proclamation, uh, price gouging is illegal. Uh, sellers may not take unfair advantage of consumers during an emergency or disaster by greatly increasing prices on essential consumer goods. And certainly I would ask the community's help if you identify situations where you believe that merchants are gouging the community, please call the Office of Consumer Protection. You know, the health of our community is our number one priority and this supplemental proclamation uh, we are ensuring that the resources necessary to fight the spread of COVID-19 in our community uh, is available. The Kualoa Ranch is the first community-spread one, right? I mean, are you, aren't you concerned? I'm sure you're concerned, but how is the... I don't know exactly which is the Kualoa Ranch. We do have a case that we believe is a community spread. So we have not had an ab we have not had that opportunity to talk about that. You know, I think we'll provide that information when we uh, have facts to provide. As we assured you, we would uh, not participate in rumors, and we have not had the opportunity to uh, get all the information and facts on uh, those positive cases that Do you have just a arrived. On, that? On, on when that information will be. Well, we'll keep you posted and we'll let you know. Uh, earlier, as we talked about uh, advanced planning. So the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency and Department of Health have been planning for sort of the worst case scenario, but really we've been siloed. So within the next 24 hours, we're only going to get those planners together and nest both plans. 
my, my, my comment to them was, we need to move and act at the pace of an unprecedented crisis. We need to make assumptions that we got widespread community spread of the virus, the COVID virus. If we keep waiting to react to certain situations, we'll be too far behind the power curve. So we're gonna plan for the worst case, but hope for the best. So we got these planners working nearly 24 seven now to come up with a comprehensive plan from worst case, if we do need to quarantine certain uh, neighborhoods or the best case, just try to monitor and to mitigate the spread, hoping that there's no, no huge cluster. Uh, I, I think that if we, we keep reacting, it, you know, it'll be just really bad for, for the state. But I wanna make sure that everyone's not panicking. There's a lot of misinformation going on in social media, right? I think some of you saw that Hawaii Island, um, there was a mandatory quarantine. That is, that is not the case. If we go to that, it'll be the absolute last resort. We are very concerned about the civil liberties of the people of Hawaii. So that will be the last decision. So I, I wanna let people know, do not panic. Go back to don't hoard, because everyone needs these critical supplies. Mayor Caldwell made an important point of yesterday by saying by hoarding, the people that can only afford one to two days worth of supply and food are the ones that suffer, because when you go to those shelves, they're all empty. So let's please take care of everyone. 